You know what the best thing about being John P is? I don't give a f Hey guys, I'm John P, and on today's episode of Geek Beat, we sweat like pigs and dissect my $30,000 solar panel installation. Today's episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Squarespace. Some of you may recall me telling you many months ago that I took the plunge and decided to try and take my home off the grid using solar power. Well, it didn't work, not entirely. So in this episode, we're gonna examine just about every detail I can cram into a reasonably watchable episode. Keep in mind, there's no way I can tell you everything in one video, so I'm gonna really load up today's blog post with even more detail. So you're gonna wanna visit geekbeat.tv forward slash solar panels for all the rest. Okay. So when I was first thinking about going solar, the first two questions that came to mind were how much and what's the payback period? If I knew now what I didn't know then, I'd have had a whole different set of questions. Can I even get solar? If I can get solar, where am I gonna put it? And if it's going on the roof, what's the condition of said roof? Because these systems are gonna sit there for decades. I mean, I could literally be dead before the solar array. So first, let's tackle some of the details, then we'll take a look at the actual installation. Question number one, can you even get it? Before I decided to get a solar array, I had no idea it was such a big deal. But there are a number of things that have to be expertly evaluated before we can even consider putting panels on a roof. First, they had to come out and do a site survey. An engineer came to actually climb up on the roof, take measurements, inspect to see if we have visibility to the south, and use this funky solar pathfinder device to determine the times of day that particular areas would be shaded. In order to qualify for funding assistance, your roof must be southerly facing and there's only about a 20 degree window that you can work it with. So if they can't point the panels in that direction, you might as well not do it because your solar generation drops dramatically. Same goes for shade. If you've got a building beside you or trees that tower over the house, you're done. Even if your roof points the right direction and nothing's blocking the sun, you still need to have an engineering survey done to determine if your roof can actually bear the additional weight. Our massive solar array, array weighs tons, literally. Luckily, it only adds about five or six pounds per square foot of roof space on the loading, so it should be able to take it in most cases. Question number two, how much solar do you need? You're pretty much on your own for this decision. In our case, there was an upper limit because we were going for a partial rebate and it maxed out at 10 kilowatts. So to some extent, figuring out what you need is narrowed down by how much room you have and the cost. But you also need to take a look at your previous year's electric bills, find out what your electric rates are, research what the projected generation will be for the size of the system you're thinking about. It's a royal pain in the ass. So I built a monster spreadsheet to calculate mine. I've shared it publicly in case you need a template or just want to take a look so you can see it if you go to the blog post at gb.tv forward slash solar panels. I've also got a link to the site that will estimate solar production for you in your area right there. To give you a rough ballpark though, our house is over 4,000 square feet. We've got a lot of stuff in there like a pool, two fridges, two air conditioners, seven TVs, a bunch of electronics, and a 10 kilowatt system isn't projected to completely offset our power usage. It would take closer to 14 kilowatts in theory. So for an average home of like 2,000 square feet, you could probably get off the grid with six to seven kilowatts. Question number three, what aren't they telling you? Oh boy, there's a lot they aren't telling you. For example, one really good thing is that these systems are mostly guaranteed for 25 years. What isn't really talked about is the fact that the solar panels are warranted for that long, but the inverters are not. So when you're doing your ROI calculations, you need to include the fact that you're going to have to spend thousands of dollars somewhere in the middle of the life cycle for changing out those parts. Another thing no one bothered to mention to me was that the roof on your house generally doesn't last as long as these systems. So let's say that you have a 10 or 15 year old roof. There is no way it's going to last as long as the panels. What do you do then? 
If you have to do any work on the roof, you have to deal with the solar array first. I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do about that. Question number four, how long does it take to install it? The good news is it only took about two full days for Axiom Solar to do the install on my roof. If you're in the Dallas area, I highly recommend those guys. They did a great job and no, they didn't pay me a dime to say that. The bad news is that the answer isn't that simple. After we did the site survey, we worked out the pricing and all that other stuff, we had to sign contracts. Now those contracts had to get sent off for approval to the electric company because we were going to be tying into their grid. And because they were picking up the bill for about 40% of the system, they had a bunch of rules about how efficient the systems have to be. Meanwhile, we had to have the structural engineer come to the house to determine if the roof could bear the weight and permits had to be pulled from the city of Dallas. By the way, if you're wondering if you can do all this yourself, the answer is no. Next question. <laughs> all of those things took weeks to complete, combined with the fact that Axiom has a very packed schedule, and that meant it took a couple of months before we could get the system installed. After we were installed, there were several inspections from the city and from the electric company before we could turn it on and actually generate power. So, short answer, let's say it takes about three months to get the system installed. Now the big question, how much does it cost? The cost of the actual system probably won't vary that much from place to place, but there are a lot of options and there are different incentives from place to place. In my case, our system cost almost exactly $30,000 and we got a 10 kilowatt system. If you were to piece it all out, probably around 60% of the cost is just the hardware. And believe me, the labor was worth it. You should have seen all the equipment and people it took to get the job done. They had a machine that lifted the panels and tons of bricks up onto the roof. They had, all had to be carried over there and installed, plus the framework for holding the panels had to be built on the roof and all the electrical work had to be done. The reality is it was worth every penny. It was just a lot of pennies. Now, out of the 30K, our local energy company, Encore, picked up the first 14K. I had to pay 16K out of pocket. And at the end of the year, we get a 30% federal tax write-off, bringing the net cost for me down to about $11,500. According to my spreadsheet, this equals around a 10-year payback for a system that's guaranteed to last 25 years. By the way, the actual guarantee is that the solar panels will still be producing 80% of their original output 25 years from now, or they'll replace them. Assuming the Chinese company we got them from is still around to warranty them, and that's a big if. More important than the 10-year payback is the fact that my investment of $11,500 is expected to generate a return of only about 5%. That's the equivalent of buying a decent bond, but frankly, it's not as risk-free. A lot of things could happen to ruin my return, so the risk is not really in line with the reward. From a purely monetary standpoint, over a 25-year period, you get at least double the return if you put that money in the stock market. And that's what makes solar so iffy. With today's level of solar efficiency and everything it takes to install it, it's really not a good investment unless you're just committed to going green. However, if you can afford to do it, it is also a form of insurance against the potential of skyrocketing energy prices. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the house and I'll show you how it's all actually put together. Okay guys, welcome to the roof. This is what a 10 kilowatt system looks like. Okay, I lied, it's actually about 9.75. The reason why is we have 39 solar panels and each one produces 250 watts of direct current. Now, you might say, why not go ahead and make it 40 and do a full 10K? We're gonna talk about that when we get downstairs to look at another part of the system. But the basic reason is because of the type of system we bought, these, these uh, panels have to be divided into three equal strings. So 13 times three is 39. That's why we've got 39 panels. Um, what happened is, when we were taking a look at the roof, they laid everything out to figure out also how many panels we could fit. 
And you'll notice, if you look right over here, there's a gap. Well, the reason for this gap is simple, and you can see it right here. It's the shadow from this exhaust tube. Believe it or not, that one little shadow prevents putting a solar panel here. Heh, who knew? I was surprised when I looked at the performance of the system how big of a difference just a little bit of shade can make, which is why this roof in particular was perfect for a solar array, because as you'll notice, it's completely flat, and the trees around all the edges are far enough back that there's never any shadow. In fact, the only shadow we get are from these tubes and from the chimney, so we had to keep the solar panels a little bit away from the chimney. Now, Let's talk about how the system goes together. First of all, this system is what's called a ballasted system. That means it is not bolted to the roof. The last thing we wanted was to have, you know, hundreds of screws in our roof, which could, you know, on a flat roof especially, could cause problems down the road. So instead, this system uses a series of rubber pads. If you look down here, you'll see there's like a rubber pad underneath railing. They built the whole railing first, then they came in, dropped the solar panels on, and finally put these ordinary little concrete paver kind of stones up here for weight. There's about 4,000 pounds worth of ballasting, which will make this system be able to withstand our Texas winds even up to like 90 miles an hour. So, the way the panels were actually installed, there are some little channels. If you look, there's a little silver L channel back here. There's one on the front, and there are little clips. All they did was literally carry the solar array in here, set it down, and put four clips. That means if one of these ever got damaged and we needed to pull it off, we just pull off those clips, unplug it, throw it away, stick another one in. They are really durable, so even if they got hailed on or lots of rain and storms and debris, they should withstand it, plus they have a 25-year warranty, so that's always good. Now let's look at how they're actually physically connected down here. It's quite simple, even I could replace this if I needed to. There's really just two cables. One, there's this black kind of power cable, and you'll see that they're kind of strung to their neighbors beside them. And then the other is this green ground cable. So what happens is these strings of 13 of these are brought together into this conduit and they run the length of this conduit down all the way over here to these big bad shut off power bricks. <laughs> so what happens is, let's say we needed to do some service or there was some damage to part of the array. We would shut off whichever string we need to and they're labeled one, two, and three. So if I wanted to replace one of the solar panels on this first string, we'd shut it down, we'd disconnect things, do the change out, and then turn it back on. There are multiple points in the system where we can eliminate the power altogether. Now from here, they run through this conduit down here where it penetrates the roof and goes into the wall and down into the garage where the inverter is. Let's go take a look. I know there are a lot of you out there that have great ideas for websites, but there are two things stopping you from taking the time to build them. Number one, well, time, and number two, money. Well, I've got, I've got just the thing to remove those barriers. Squarespace. Squarespace will help you get your ideas on the web fast with site designs that you can control from a simple drag and drop interface. No coding required. Just choose one of their beautiful site templates, plug in the text and images, and you're done fast and easy. They can even have specialized functionality for things like e-commerce, open table integration, menus, and coming very soon, audio collections. Best of all, pricing starts at eight bucks a month and includes a free domain name when you sign up for a year. Squarespace sites also incorporate responsive design, so they'll all be mobile friendly. That means it looks as good on an iPad or smartphone as it does in a web browser. And that's important considering how much surfing people do on their phones nowadays. 
Speaking of mobile, Squarespace also offers an Android app so you can manage your site while you're on the go. If you prefer iOS, don't worry, they've got you covered too. So not only can you post things while you're on the go, you can check your site analytics, manage comments, and many more things. You can sign up for a free two-week trial with no credit card required. I like that. And get 10% off when you order using our offer code, GeekBeat8. That's GeekBeat8, not just GeekBeat, guys. GeekBeat8. When you sign up, tweet me your Squarespace URL, and I'll be happy to share it for you. All right, back to the install. <laughs> All right, guys, up on the roof, we're doing nothing but generating lots of direct current, DC. However, the house consumes AC current. So we need to be able to take the DC and convert it into AC. And that is where the Sunny Boy box comes in. This is a power inverter. Now, we talked a little earlier when we were talking about pricing how different ways of converting the, the power. This is a single inverter instead of micro inverters. So we just use this one inverter, all three of those strands come into it, and it basically takes the power and feeds it right into this power breaker. And you can see right here, we've got one that says solar PV. So remember, I said there are multiple ways to turn this system off. If I flip this breaker, it's off. There's also a shutoff valve right here. If I flip this thing off, it's off. And then there's the ones up on the roof. So there's a lot of uh, safety built into the system. One thing I really like about this particular inverter is, this is funny, you can read the type of you know, data that you're getting from it here. And if you look right here, it shows a knuckle tapping. That's because if you tap it, it changes its display every time you tap it. Isn't that awesome? I don't know who came up with it, that. It's the little things. It is. I think that more, I think we should have more devices that if you hit them, they do something, like especially out of frustration. <laughs> no, not me, Dave. Okay, there's two other little things I want to show you. One, hidden behind this cabinet, is our Sunny Web Box. This is actually taking, it's got connectivity into the Sunny Boy and it's taking data from it and then it is presenting that to the statistics for us. So we get all of our reports and stuff on the web from this device, taking it, pushing them up to the website. That's one thing. There's one other component which goes in down here. We've got to go outside the other side of the wall to see it. All right, we do have an electric meter coming to the house. However, we also have our own electric meter for what we're generating at the house, and that is this box. So you can see that it's generated 2,808 kilowatt hours, and we have another, yet another power switch where we can shut things off here. I think they built enough safety into the system. So you can expect if you go through a big install the way we did, they are going to just rip your house apart. They're gonna to have to put in additional uh, meters. There's gonna be places where cabling comes through your roof. You're probably gonna have inverters inside your garage taking up part of the wall. The question is, is it all worth it? In our case, this system is feeding about two thirds of our energy needs. So the ROI for the whole thing is about, I don't know, let's say 10 years. Yeah, for us, it was worth it. I'm glad we did it, especially if energy prices were to go nuts or anything like that. We're kind of insured against that. Plus, we still can fail back over to the existing grid. So, you know, the question is whether you've got the cash to pony up to make it happen up front. All right, I hope you guys really enjoyed that whole overview. If you have additional questions, because I know there are things that I did not get to, head on over to the blog, geekby.tv forward slash solar panels. Let me know there. If we have a bunch of questions, we'll do a follow-up video. Otherwise, I'll just answer them in line on the blog. Okay, thumbs up on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash geekbeatv. I'm out of here. Come on, Dave, it's hot.